It's a narrative. This is our narrative. Our beliefs plus our actions. Our subconscious then learns to sabotage us, and we do it through the process of shame. I am the mistake. We can see how it happens. All these experiences, they start believing that they really are. So no matter how much I can say to, remember my first story about this potential client? And I said, okay, go ahead and say that. And she couldn't say it, couldn't say it, couldn't say it, because she didn't believe it's possible. The elephant wouldn't permit it even though the writer says, yes, it's a good idea, go this way. She could not get herself there because it wasn't true on the inside. And self-sabotaging becomes a way of life. That's an addiction. Um, there are people who will get in car wrecks before they have to do things so they don't have to. Anytime that they start having a relationship, something horrible will happen in that relationship. And we think that's just bad luck. I'd like you to think differently. There's enough evidence to support that people who are always having rotten things happen to them, it's because they started happening at a very early age and they keep compounding it to the point that they're attracting that. It's a way, their way of protecting themselves, even though it's harmful. So let's go into the definition of addiction. An addiction is a, a methodology that numbs the pain which we addressed. It keeps us from integrating. You cannot integrate through the process of addiction and it's self-destructive distraction to avoid self-worth. Now that's a mouthful, but look at the power of that. We will self-destruct to distract us from believing we could possibly have any worth of our own. And addiction is supported by what we call perfectionism. So let's address that real quick. Perfectionism is that process where we are obsessed to hide our own flaws. Research, bullies bully because of their perceived, because they are inadequate and they know it or perceive it and they're afraid someone will find out. Number one cause of bullying, envy. Number one reason, the corporate allows it. The environment of incivility is permitted by supervisors and the corporate culture. Shame is a coping mechanism within perfectionism and perfectionism never gets you satisfied. So here's the challenge. Um, if, you're, if you are Christian in your belief structure, you have this process where you're trying to be as perfect as you can, right? Well, that's a challenge because I've never known anyone who could walk on water. It just doesn't happen. Yet we have this idea that we can somehow, so we beat ourselves up when we don't. So have you ever complimented someone? I'll just tell you a quick story. I walked up to a gal that I know. She was a friend of mine and of humble means. And she had a new dress to her. And this was on a Sunday. I walked up to her and I said, you know, the dress is flattering to you. You look good in that. She goes, oh, no, I don't. It's not very nice at all. It's just, <laughs> so. Okay, well, let me, let me give you how Himmer looks at life. She just called my judgment into question. So I agreed with her. Yeah, you're right. It's not. <laughs> and she goes, huh? Richard? <laughs> As though I'm to blame. And I said, just a second. I don't go around throwing frivolous compliments at people. You do look nice in the dress. I'm just letting you know. It's okay to accept that as a compliment, right? You know, stop for a second. Based on her experiences, what were her beliefs about herself? She was fat, ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her self-worth was being demonstrated, but all anyone else sees is what's above the line, the 10% of her behavior. It was clear once that she said, well, no, it doesn't. I had no social skills when I did that. I'm not justifying my behavior, but it did illustrate a point. <laughs> she was acting this way, what the whole world saw, diminutive, hunched over. She walked with her shoulders like this. Have you ever seen people do that? Okay, or the head down, tucked down, based upon things that had happened to her. Now, we had a nice chat after that. And so from now on, whenever I compliment her, she says, thank you. <laughs> it works. And I said, you're welcome. And that works. All right. Perfect, on the other hand, this is the difference. Perfect is an event that is exactly what we need in that moment to get us closer to integration. So if you had a bad experience as a kid, if something happened to you and your wife, or you had a fight, you ran out of gas, whatever it might be, perfect. It's exactly what you need right now in order for you to grow. Anything else is resistance. And the more you resist anything in your life, 
the more you're going to bottle up negative energy and that'll turn into a chronic illness. Perfect is a mistake that gets a retake. That's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. The whole process of addiction recovery goes like this. Here's your starting place. Here's your ending place. You come up and then you make a mistake and you drop. Then you go up and then you have a mistake. And yet we start judging ourselves when we drop, don't we? Yet here's where we started. The difference between the two is called a gap. Beautiful. Look how far I've gone on my mistakes that I got to do retakes on. We learn by mistakes. We don't learn by successes. All right. So finishing up the evening, here's my case study. Remember the one that uh, called me 19 months ago? So the day she called me, she weighed X. Today she's X minus 59. The day she called me, she was on three legal drugs, or 11 legal drugs. Three. Oh, I changed that. I, I went back and clarified it. This was the accurate one. <laughs> Today, she's on one prescribed drug after 19 months. Her beliefs were no worth, powerless, can't have healthy relationships, not self-aware, and definitely not integrated. Today, here's the way she looks at it. She has the ability to say, I'm of worth. That was a monumental mark. She's been sober now for 15 months. Now, there's a difference between sobriety, or the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is integration, is learning how to function this way. She not only believes she can have a healthy relationship, but she believes that it's essential. Now, what a difference in the mindset. She now sees that becoming self-aware is a clear path, and there's an equation to it. And there is. There's a system that you can go through to process going this road. Before she would act out maladaptively with no boundaries, she's starting to learn the adaptive behaviors. So inside the process, putting emotional intelligence into that space when you were able to clear out the bias is critical. That's what we do we clean. So just as an example, if I want to work with Ralph, I'm not going to start here. What am I going to do to work with Ralph before I get any process made? Filter it out. I've got to get rid of all of it, don't I? So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pour it down the drain. I'm going to clean it out and start with that clean vessel. That's not going to happen with a motivational speaker. It's going to happen by going into the subconscious and being able to get it to the point where Ralph no longer believes that he's of no value. And it's going to happen in this process. Experiences lead to beliefs. But I'm going to go and change the experiences through that process so he doesn't believe that way anymore by neutralizing the belief pattern of what happened in the old. Today, she believes that lifelong learning is the way to go. There's no end to learning, but it's satiable. She recognizes that stories that have happened to her are perfect. See, so just what had to happen to her. Now, I wish they didn't, but you know, we can't go back and change it, can we? The things that happened to me when I lost my father, I can't change that. That's inevitable. But I can accept it for what it is and say, Richard, that was perfect. It's what you needed when you were 10. There was a reason why it happened. And you know, I can't explain today why things happened to me or to you, but I can certainly learn to work with them. She now understands that everything learning is iterative. The compounding effect to be addicted is the same compounding effect to learn out of it. And you learn from one thing to another and you compound the positive. You keep moving up in that direction and it's all circular. If I can learn how to create a new behavior on one thing, I can then apply it to anything else because it's a principle that's universal and it works in everything that we do. So finishing up, she believed that living with addictions is easier. She doesn't know how to forgive and forget and the fear process. She now recognizes that fear doesn't bring peace. Just real quick, fear is such a, a huge motivating issue for all of us. When we use fear, to go to the past to project our future, we live in a time frame called psychological time. We're living in the past and we're just using it to project the future. What this client learned to do was to live in the now or is learning to. It's called clock time. It's accepting what is, just the flow going through. Forgiveness is for me where forgetting is neutralizing the bias. You never forget the event, but you can't forget the pain associated with the event. Change is powerful, possible, and essential. And the fear of pain 
the, the fear of addiction or the pain of addiction is now less than the pain of change. And you're going to get pain no matter what you do. That's the process. So what